it's a duck hunter. Oh, you ask, how do I know? How can I tell? Well, it could be from his little kayak thing sticking out of the back end of his thing. There, I'll show you. Definitely a duck hunter. He was smiling. He's way too happy, enjoying life while the rest of us keep working. That should be a duck hunter. Yep, we've got the first sign of winter's coming. It's been a little bit of snow pellets, a little bit of snow flurries. It's still about 38 degrees, give or take, but uh, it's magically able to snow. I'm gonna call it snow because it's white and it's, yeah. Okay, we just had Amy bring us all some food from a country because they do that once a year and she drove 99 miles an hour to bring the food to us all right well there was this incident when i passed a semi that was going very slow and you know that hemi oh boy yeah. i thought this could get me in trouble mm -hmm. i never had a speeding ticket unlike you gas is cheap right oh, gas. Yeah, gas gas is cheap amy Gas is cheap. So we moved back home with all the combines and stuff. We kind of got our long distance fields taken care of. So we're getting back closer to home now. And I have been told by the truck drivers that you have got to do something with the intersection down on the corner because they put a new blacktop top on the highway this summer but the guys that done the job they kind of forgot to finish the last two miles of putting in a little bit of a gravel you know so there's a big ridge huge ridge actually type that you hit with a loaded semi and your teeth kind of jar unless you come down to a creeping stop so I'm gonna go out and donate some time and Thought I told you guys not to look at that anymore. Well, I'm on the mission of looking for the loader tractor. It's been found along with the tracks from the grain cart. So those two tracks are, uh, or is, what is left of the mud from 2021 as it uh, is impossible to clean out all of the mud inside the bogey wheels and all that so after it sat all summer long they hooked on to it and it finally has crumbleized itself and has fallen out of the tracks and then it made a nice long path of well, it's going to be mud now that it's kind of rainy out, but nothing you can do about it. Okay, here's the first intersection. Oh, now we got people coming. Yeah. Hmm. Well, get out of my way, buddy. I'm coming in hot. No, right or wrong, I'm going to borrow some gravel from the other side of the road to fill in down there by the highway. Try to get rid of that big lumpy bump thing. Same problem as ours. Where can I put you guys? You know, I think it's way too dangerous for you guys to be hanging out out there without a seat belt or anything. I gotta, I gotta focus here. I just don't think there's no good place for you out here. Uh, you got to come back in. Besides, it's darn cold out. 30. 
36, 38. I think I already mentioned that, but okay. I'll show you when I'm done. Sorry you can't enjoy the smoothening, but I'm out of here. You know, it would really be nice if these farmers wouldn't be on the road all the time hogging up the place like they own it. Let a guy get the road fix, fix back up, I say. Fixing, fixing the road back up. How is it? It's just a question, but how is it possible that there actually can be jobs that you can start and then not finish? Just let's put a new top on the highway and pull out and not fix up every uh, everything else. Just leave the job kind of done. Don't don't finish the job, but well. I don't harvest corn like that. We don't start the cornfield and then not do tillage. We do it from start to finish. I suppose there's going to be haters on that one, but how much truth is there to it? How about finishing jobs once you start them, guys? Huh? I miss my box scraper. Okay, off to the next intersection. One more mile east of us here. Try to do a little bit of smoothing in there, too. Oh, now the phone. Phone's ringing. Okay, at this moment, I think I need to have a talk with you young kids and some of you older adults. Uh, intersections on gravel roads, not dirt roads, gravel, because we got gravel on these roads. Dirt, run, dirt roads are out in the field where there is no gravel, so take note of that too. I'm really in a mood today. I'm gonna just tell it like it is. Well, anyway, you know, you get these here choppy little waves. I, we all call them washboards. You know how they appear? Two, two ways, in my opinion. You've got the road maintainer that maybe is going too fast and you get the blade jumping. But most of it comes from these guys that they get around the corner and they think that vehicle or truck or anything you're driving needs to go from zero to 60 in approximately, I don't know, well, as fast as they can. If they could do it in two seconds, they would do it. So what happens, for those of you that don't know, you get them tires spinning. Well, if you've ever watched, watched how that works, the tire is digging, but it gets bouncing and spinning and shooting out little waves. For you snowmobilers, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Well, it's the same thing on the intersection on gravel gravel roads so just turn your corner slowly accelerate the first hundred feet or so and then gently get into the throttle once you get up to 40 50 miles an hour if you feel like you must put the foot feet to the absolute firewall go ahead because the vehicle can't spin its tires unless you drive a Hemi then uh, you might end up in the ditch because it's full throttle. Chet, help me out. Okay, we're getting close to, I may be getting too fussy now, but the washboards, this is a little bit of an incline and there is a little extra gravel on here. I don't know why, but uh, the thicker the gravel, the worse the washboards are, especially on intersections. Um, but I, I'm getting too fussy now, but we're going to be using this road later on this afternoon, so I know for a fact that uh, the washboards are going to be back by the time we're done hauling out three quarters of corn off of this intersection. They just automatically appear. There's really nothing. If you use an intersection heavily, uh, they're going to happen. They'll, they'll show up. That was almost kind of, no, it, it was fine. Just a little bit of a slow down bump, what do you call that, in parking lots. I better smoothen that back off or the guys are gonna, I'll be in trouble. Okay. Think she looks pretty good. Good enough for me. Hope it's good enough for the truckers. If it isn't, I know they'll let me know. more pleasant little 
rain showers or whatever you call it at this time of the year. Wiper weather? Maybe that's what it's called. There, that's better. Okay, we're heading back to the farm. Check on the dryers. Nothing called me, so I think everything's still running, but it's been pretty good. Everything's been going really good with the corn dryers this year. Uh, they've ran all night. Everything is cleaned out and uh, dried, or all the corn, the wet bin is always empty in the morning when we get back to the farm. And uh, can't complain, but we ain't done yet. There's going to be more than likely one of those times that uh, it's going to be calling me and short night of sleep usually happens a few times a year but it is what it is. Okay I got distracted because I remembered right right across the road or the highway from the farm the township uh, put in two culverts so I ran up there smoothing that off because with some of the heavier uh, traffic Ooh, let me fix you I think you were looking up a uh, up at the ceiling there a little bit uh, with all the semi traffic the it's gotten compacted down so it wasn't so pleasant the uh, Instagram guys following there might have been a Dukes of Hazard comment made about that one little hoopty hoo thing there but uh, smoothing it off best as I could without my box scraper like I said a fun fact township uh, townships are six by six miles square and if you haven't thought about getting on the board you should do it it's a not too bad of a job but a uh, little work but a little bit of help will help everybody so think about helping okay a little bit of a detour on projects uh, I got home to the farm and Guess what? Uh-huh. Yep. Blew an airbag. So I'm gonna quickly, keyword quickly, replace the airbag, hopefully, without any issues. Last time it happened, oh, here's something more. Standing corn stalks, you know. I've always been against driving out in the cornfield with semis because bad things can happen with wiring harnesses hanging low and all that. Well, look at here. Yeah, there's, there's supposed to be a, this here, that is supposed to be attached like so. Well, because these equalizer, which I love, I would never go away from them, they, uh, the hose routes in between the dual has to go in there. Well, Mr. Cornstock must have gotten up in there, sheared that off, which then there is no check valve because it's been sheared off. And all the air on the inside tire yesterday went out oh, two days ago and debeated another delay. But we're going to replace this airbag quickly. Get up in here. I'll show you guys if you've never seen an airbag. Here's, here's an airbag that's, that's good. Yeah, see how nice and round it is. No issues. Here's a bad one. Yeah. Just, just rags, rags left. So now I gotta take off airline, take off a big bolt, nut, loosen it underneath there, slide a new one in, we're good to go. Oh yes, this slide has been brought to you by Shameful, but it's funny. Okay, I've got it removed, uh, it sits right in that. Held on by two bolts up top and one airline removed. So here we go. New one, old one. I don't know why it wouldn't hold there. Just very strange. Just weird. Well, well, we'll try the new one, see if that fixes it. Now there is a right and wrong. Notice how the studs are off to one side. So I'm going to have to make sure I get it put on right the first time instead of doing it twice. Although I've got the right t-shirt on today. T-shirt, hoodie. Forgive me for breathing, I've been bending, so. Okay, 
Back to work. We will tighten up the top here. They do supply new hardware for the top end. And for some reason they did not on the bottom, but I've got the bottom stud all, all uh, rigged up. So we should be shortly trucking again. Okay, I've got everything tightened up again. Sometimes those push-in air fittings do not survive reassembly. Um, I suppose the rust, salt, Minnesota salt, I'll blame it on the salt. Uh, Good to go. Tight, 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 tightened, tightened. Got all five points tightened up. And uh, just for all you guys out there, we all had a first time too of doing airbags. And I always remember to dump your air before you work on anything that is inflated. So. That is number one rule. Right there is how you dump the air suspension on the Tempty trailer. And don't take any airlines off or your face might be rearranged if not planted six feet deep in the ground. Because can you imagine if your face would have been anywhere close to that? Just the dust and stuff shooting off of that when that exploded. The driver down there said he pulled over to the dump pit, hit the air brakes for whatever reason at that point. He said he heard something, truck kind of shook, and he looked around and said thanks, but he survived it. Then we got looking around and found it, so be careful when you work around compressed air, or it might be a life-changing moment. I am going to air it up and hit the road. Well, I've been thinking and worrying about, for those of you that wanted to watch the air go in. Just like that, we're going to be back rolling. 